Hi again everyone, I hope you're all doing really well. While many on here have followed me for my reflections on various stocks, it is something that may not be realized by those who follow me, but my first investment love is actually real estate. And in fact, far more of my wealth is tied up in property than it is in the stock market. Um, now, I have been investing in property for almost 10 years now, and I own eight properties across three Australian cities. And generally speaking, this expected property dip is arguably the biggest challenge my portfolio has faced to date. While my investing is undertaken in Australia, I think what I am going to talk about is applicable universally. Anyway, personally, I'm not too worried about the rising interest rates and the idea that properties could be set to drop by as much as 20%. The reason why is because I have some ideas for how I can allow myself to ride out this storm. So not that this is investing advice, nor necessarily applicable to your own situation, but here are five property moves to help navigate the supposed property crash. Number one is remortgage your property. Such move is obviously going to be subjected to your borrowing capacity, which will likely begin to curb in an environment of rising interest rates. Anyway, while this move may seem a little harebrained on the surface, one principle I've always tried to maintain with my investing strategy is to have a cash buffer of six months to cover all property um, repayments and expenses in the event that all properties were to go empty and I was to find myself out of work. By remortgaging a property today, I will be able to pull out my existing cash in equity before the value of the property begins to drop in value, which could be by as much as 20% if what people are expecting or predicting is to come through once interest rates continue to ramp up. You can hold this money in some sort of loan offsetting facility and give yourself peace of mind. However, if you have been prudent with your investing and already have this sort of money as a cash buffer, then this extra money could be used to potentially fund another investment, which moves me to the second property move on my list, which is number two, buying an investment property. There is a saying, to get worried when everyone is greedy and to get greedy when everyone is worried. I think it was Warren Buffett or someone who said that. Anyway, right now, this market is actually possibly presenting a good buying opportunity, particularly if you are someone looking to hold an investment property over the longer term. As property prices drop, there is the opportunity to pick up a bit of a bargain in the market. Now, I can't say this for everywhere, but one thing I have seen in the markets that I am invested in is the demand for rental properties has actually picked up significantly. This problem is partly compounded by the slowing new supply of dwellings due to problems many builders are facing with supplies. But there is also quite a demand for rentals at the moment, and as such, market rent rates have gone up. So if you were to buy a property now, you could pick up one for a good discount and be able to hopefully easily rent it out at a higher rent, giving you a better yield and a higher likelihood of being able to secure a cash flow positive or at least cash flow neutral property. And perhaps this move was part of the motivation behind this video. Buying another property in this falling market is something that I've already started to make steps towards doing. Moving on. For investors, another potential move you could consider doing is taking over the management of one of your own properties. Obviously, this one is circumstantial, but generally I have left my properties to be managed by property managers. This cost me a little bit of money, but it does simplify a lot of processes such as record keeping and solving day-to-day -day issues that may arise with the properties. Now, the rate you pay your property managers can range a lot. I've had some that cost me over $100 per month, um, and some that have been around the $40 per month mark, depending on the property. Plus, of course, you have to remember the myriad of fees that property managers are only too willing to charge you for signing the new lease, advertising, etc. Obviously, because my properties are geographically spread, I can't manage all of my properties, but I have recently taken over doing one that is close to where I currently live. And to be honest, it has actually been really simple. Though admittedly, I have a study background in the field. Um, anyway, you can find contract templates and condition reports online. You can advertise properly for free on sites such as Gumtree and Facebook Marketplace, which I have found to be actually far more effective than traditional real estate advertising websites. If you are to take this route with your property, it is perhaps worth reflecting on whether or not your property is suitable for you to manage based on the property type, value, and your knowledge and ability to manage a property. There is a bit of work involved, but if you can set up systems that you can stick with, it is definitely a doable solution. While the savings is not a huge one, if you are paying $100 a month in management fees, plus throw a few extra property manager related expenses, you could easily be saving yourself in the vicinity of $1,500 a year, which will only add to the profitability of your asset. Now, if you are not someone who commands a multi-property portfolio, and let's face it, most people don't, I have a few property moves that might still be relevant to you. The first and my fourth on the list of five is lease out a room or a space inside one of your existing properties. 
This one is pretty simple and probably doesn't need too much of an explanation, but if you have a spare room, you can lease it out for some extra cash. However, get creative. It doesn't have to be another room. You might have a spare garage space or parking space. Believe it or not, depending on where you live, the type of space could be valuable to real estate. Of course, you have to be comfortable with sharing your own space, but it's a great way of making an extra income and potentially lowering your share of some bills. With the leasing of a spare room, this could be done as a form of holiday housing via a platform like Airbnb, or it can be on an ongoing basis with a roommate. There is a pent up rental demand, so there is a good chance that someone will be willing to take your spare space. This moves you on to the fifth and final property move for this video. Again, this is applicable for someone living in their own place, but particularly someone who is not that attached to where they live, that being rent vesting. This can actually be quite a profitable move if you move to somewhere that rents for less than what you can rent out your place for. On top of this, your property becomes an investment property and you may be able to take advantage of a number of tax savings associated with holding such a property. Now, I don't know about all jurisdictions, but in Australia, investment loans tend to attract a higher interest rate. However, you could potentially hold this as a lower owner occupied interest rate until such time as you decide to buy another property or be honest with the bank and volunteer to pay more money in interest to them. But who would? Anyway, this list wasn't meant to be exhaustive, but just some ideas. If you have any other potential properties that could be done to write out and potentially even thrive through the upcoming market fall that many analysts are predicting, share them in the comments below. Also, let me know if you like this variation of video, i.e. talking about property um, and whether I should put out more material in this area. Don't worry, I'm not ditching the stocks just yet, just looking for other ways to branch out on my channel. Anyway, until next time everyone, man markets trade in your favour. Cheers.